Welcome to Coed for Kids Facebook Live. I'd like to thank you for joining us today, whether you're watching live or watching our replays. My name is Melissa Shamel. I'm a Special Projects Coordinator for Coed for Kids, the Prevention Services. We brought back Kristen Betts this week to be our guest and to share some tips and strategies, more things we can put in our bag of tools so that these things will come in handy when we need that support and helping our children to try and understand things and um, express them how they feel about themselves and having that confidence. We have a lot of powerful information to share today, so you're gonna wanna stick around and hang out with us for a few minutes. Today we're going to talk about a child's self-esteem. I want to start out with what is self-esteem, uh, just a general definition for now, and then as we go through the live, you'll hear more with, um, we'll expand on some strategies and some examples on ways that you can help your child build up their self-esteem. Self-esteem is basically how you feel about yourself. Um, we want to make sure our children, and even we as adults, um, they're proud of you and they feel worthy and they want to feel lovable and we want to help them with that um, as that piece of the self-esteem make them feel accepted and liked regardless we need to be like the cheerleader for our kids um, when my I like this story because my children began preschool it was kind of hectic in the mornings and we it, mornings became a little more structured um, so my husband was a big help. He had a lot of flexibility in his schedule. So he was able to take the kids in the mornings to get them where they need to be. Uh, there were the days that I had to do it and I was on my own. So we did as much preparation in the evening before. So the morning kind of went a little more smoothly and less decisions needed to be made because you want, always want to start that day with your babies, you know, in a good mood and you want to start them out on a, you know, in a good foot, on a good foot. Well, um, there were some mornings when it was up to me to get them and oftentimes I'd walk into school a little bit late and I'd have a bag and sometimes my makeup bag was with me and I'd say sorry I'm late but it, uh, I got into an argument with a toddler about what socks that she wanted to wear this day but I, I just think I like to share that because again it's you know it can be rough in those times I call it supper time we call it a piranha hour when yeah. everybody needed everything at once and the water's boiling over or whatever but I think some things that we hear in the news today and um, good and bad, a lot of issues, they, they, can, they can trace back to self-esteem of an individual. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on how we damage children's self-esteem. Uh, stand in line at a Walmart <laughs> and you can hear some, some comments that don't always make somebody feel good about themselves. So today our goal is more to um, focus on some ideas to build that self-esteem and why is it important as children are developing? Um, I'll, one more comment before we get into some questions and uh, strategies, but uh, as an educator for 33 years, as the years went by, um, children came to school with some more worries and more concerns yeah. and uh, little trauma, little mini dramas in the morning might have happened and whether it was family issues or grandma's picking me up today instead of mom, shift changes, we're moving. They, they have worries, they have little worries. And so I think it was something also that I made sure I made that interact, had an interaction with them in the morning when they got there and then at ne in the evening when it was time to go home. But we had a little rule in our room um, because you want that positivity and, and you want them to feel good about themselves. That's the foundation for their mm -hmm. day anyhow. And I would always say there's two words you're not allowed to use in the classroom. And those two words are, I can't. You can say, I can't yet. And that's okay because that means we're going to work towards getting to what we can do. And that shows effort, determination, and perseverance. And so that just, you know, brings me to where, we're, where our topic's going to focus on today. Um, where does the self-esteem come from? And how are we making sure that we're feeding our good things to our mm -hmm. kids so they do feel good about themselves? Yeah, and I think a lot of it, it I mean, obviously it comes from family or anybody that is caring for a child. So if you're the caregiver of that child, that self-esteem, we help build that. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I think there's a lot of ways that we do end up tearing it down and not on purpose. Yeah. We don't even realize we're doing it. And a lot of times at home, I always say, we have to pick our battles. <laughs> like what is important, what is not important. So, 
your socks made me think of like when my kids get dressed on their own and sometimes they come out and I'm just like, whoa boy, like <laughs> I don't know what we have on today or mismatched socks mismatched. or whatever it is. But they are so proud that they went in, got themselves dressed and are ready to go. And sometimes that's just a battle we don't need to pick. That's right. You know, we get our shoes on our jackets and let's go because I'm proud of you for getting yourself ready because you knew I needed help this morning or whatever it may be instead of being upset that they don't match or their socks are mismatching and it's not okay to go out like that. It, it is okay because they're very proud of themselves. So those are moments that I think a lot of times we have to build them up. Um, and it also comes with um, having the good relationships and good attachments. So with their providers that are caring for them, with their family members, those attachments are keys for kids feeling comfortable in their own skin, for them wanting to be with you. Um, they feel happy around you. Like you want them to be comfortable enough where they can tell you anything. They just feel themselves when they're around you. When a child doesn't, that's when they're not okay. They, they're more antsy about things. Yes. They don't feel good about things people are telling them. So it's a little more confusing for them. So having good attachments, good bonds with kids, those will increase that self-esteem in itself. Um, another thing I was thinking of when we were came up with this topic um, a lot of the self-esteem stuff too is, I think when kids are entering your classroom in the morning or just when your kids are waking up in the morning, you know, telling them something nice about yeah. themselves or, and it doesn't have to be anything about their physical features, just something that they're doing that you like. Because what I see that we would run into, especially in childcare centers is some people would always tell little girls how pretty they look. Oh, like yeah. you look so pretty today. <laughs> But did you tell the other six girls that they looked pretty today? And that's where you start to have some issues because another little girl's gonna be like, well, they didn't tell me I looked or pretty today. Or do I look pretty, yes. Yeah. So it's it's better to almost compliment them on things that they're doing well, like, oh, I love your blue shirt today. Little things like that, that are just, you can tell everybody their shirts are cool. And we do games of helping them learn their colors by, you know, who's wearing a shirt with cars on it today. Oh, yeah. And certain boys show, you know, stand up and they're all like excited, like, ooh, they're talking about my shirt. This is cool. <laughs> so those little things will build their self-esteem in itself without having to talk about the physical features of somebody. And I think sometimes when we think of self-esteem, we go straight to the physical features yeah. of Looks. a person. Yeah. So I think if we focus a little bit more on that stuff, that'll help you know, make them a little bit more proud of things they're doing. And when they do accomplish something, be proud of it. Even if they tell you 20 times, <laughs> because that's what happens at this age, is you hear 20 times that, you know, I drew a circle. That's fantastic, and that's a great circle. And every time we draw another circle, that's a great circle. You're getting better every time I see this. Because then that makes them want to continue to, you know, keep doing it. And versus not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember... Um, so many times in at, in school age, we would call home when there was a problem with a child, and mm -hmm. we tried to make it a goal that at least make a call once in a while to tell your tell your family something good that child did. Yeah, and they come to school that you know that they're like. They come to school the next morning. You called my mom and told yeah. her about you know how I held the door or, again, even if, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. how little it is, just to oh, get that yeah. positive. And I think. So much is negative anymore that we've, it's a, it takes a concentrated effort. I mean, there's no doubt it's, it's draining to think ahead, to be yeah. positive when you're doing anybody, children and, or adults. I think just trying to see that positive piece mm -hmm. that helps make them feel good about themselves because there's some days we can feel pretty beaten up. Oh, absolutely. And, and especially the competition that I think our world is in, whether it's, you know, it, you see it in the little toddlers right yes. now already, that competition piece. Well, and that's where I think with um, toddlers and preschoolers, I know we've always focused in our house of that you will lose at some point. Mm -hmm. Like, and losing is okay, and to be okay with it. So when we would play games with our kids, or play card games, board games, whatever it may be, you know, even kickball out in the yard, Yes. you know, me and their dad, we always, we played to play. Like, we didn't play to make sure that they won. Because otherwise, they were always, we won, we won, we won. They had that mentality then. Mm -hmm. So if we would win, we'd always shake their hands, tell them, great job, you'll get it next time. Good day. And yep. that way, they still understood, like, yes, I didn't win, and this doesn't feel that great, but maybe next time I can win. 
And yes, there were tears and, you know, sometimes we threw fits and, but that was the point of trying to teach them that we can't win everything and losing doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It's not always bad. That's we right. We learn from losing. I don't think you can learn to win without losing. Like, it's just the process. So, I know in our household, we stress that a lot. Like, it's okay to lose and it's okay to be upset about losing, but to a point. Like, don't stretch it out and be super angry about it and this isn't fair um it happens and next time we'll just try harder get and up, see yep. if we can win get up and and try it again and yeah. that and we recognize that effort you know you're not always going to be first place and yeah we need to make sure and i know like little games like shoots and ladders and candy yeah. land it's it can you know you're up and down yeah. in those games because <laughs> you're winning in one minute and then it doesn't take one card and you're back at the beginning yeah but again those are you're right those are teachable moments and mm -hmm. i think that um you're not always going to succeed and there's other times that you're going to do something you may not want to do and yeah. you still have to make an attempt and um give some effort and mm -hmm. trying to do some things that you, maybe you're you don't want to do because you're not going to be successful at it and, and then that's okay it transfers it's that it's a it skill does. skill they're learning that might be applied later on in life that doesn't always go your way you're not always going to be first but you, you're still a good person you still feel good about yourself mm -hmm. you know? yep and I was gonna say, even encouraging um like if they try something and it doesn't come out necessarily like the way they want it. So if they're building a tower or we're putting a puzzle together, um, I'm trying to think, maybe some artwork or anything like that. They're really focusing on it and it's just not turning out the way that they want it to. We still have to praise them for the fact that you're trying. Mm -hmm. And it might not look exactly like the picture that you're trying to do, just... or but you're building your own. Like it's turning into something that you're creating. So keep working on it and then we'll see what it looks like. Because if you encourage them to do something over and over again, they'll keep trying. If we say, oh yeah, no, that doesn't look anything like what you're trying to make. Well, of course, then they're going to make, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. So why am I even trying? No trying. And a lot yeah. of kids will get that attitude. Well, then I'm done with this. I'm not doing it anymore because it's not working. You have to keep working and you have to keep trying. And that does kind of builds them up to doing it, you know, it with that support. Gives them, yes, it's that support. And I think it's important. Um, we just had a conversation a little bit about how we need to help teach these skills oh. that um, mm -hmm. children need support. Um, like she was just saying um, about their like feelings and walk. Yeah. We teach them to, mm -hmm. you know, we help our child learn to walk. We help them learn to eat. We also need to help them develop some of these skills for their confidence and yeah. their self esteem and. It doesn't and come naturally. It, that's the words and, I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, it doesn't come naturally, and it's not just um, kind of like a born-in thing. It, it's mm -hmm. With development, a lot of things happen, and like we know we're going to walk and crawl and talk, and all that's going to happen. The self-esteem issues is something that is learned, and we have to help build that to the point where they feel confident enough in themselves. Yes. And they can express themselves appropriately, understand what things are, and that takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. Um, I know, I mean, my oldest is 11, and self-esteem-wise, sometimes we have issues. You know, of course, my youngest has lots of issues with it because <laughs> he's six, but um, my oldest, we do struggle sometimes with it and trying to understand where to go and how to feel and, you know, is it okay, is it not okay? You know, when you're playing, um, he's in a basketball oh. league with other kids, and sometimes he doesn't understand, you know, why somebody plays more than him or, you know, he feels like he should be in more, and I'm like... I know, but yeah. that's the way it goes. And so if you want to get in more and you want to play, have more play time per se, then we practice harder. Oh, yeah. We practice, practice. more because that stuff doesn't come naturally either. And I think that's where a lot of kids are these days. They just think they're naturally going to be good at everything. And that's not the case. Yeah. And so we have to be able to be there to back them up, to encourage them to try harder, to practice more. Or if it's something that we feel like maybe that's not their niche right. to do. Recognize it. That we can encourage them to go in a different path. Because sometimes we don't see that. Even as adults, we think we have something mm -hmm. and maybe we're not that great at it. <laughs> and so maybe somebody can, you know, kind of swerve us in a different direction. And that's okay too. Because I think that helps with your self-esteem as well. Because then maybe you'll find something that really is what you're meant to do and, and good at and yeah. and I think too before you want to you know you don't want to give up so quick no so many times if, if if they're not doing well I'll just quit I'll do something else yeah. or I won't do anything and yeah 
and we want to that's why i think along the way we make sure we recognize their effort as they're yeah you know you might not have the whole puzzle put together but you got one piece yep exactly so that's and that's great that we need to do that um i do want to mention that um we use a lot of books and mm, i know these I these aren't the greatest and they're going <laughs> to date me um that's okay. mercer mayer's little critter was our favorites oh, yeah. Uh, Franklin, Franklin the Turtle was mm -hmm. our favorite. Um, Arthur, Queen for a Day. This mm -hmm. might have ruined my daughter that year. I don't know. But <laughs> it, I mean, it just, just, um, and this would probably oh, be for like the next one. time. The, um, when Sophie gets really, really angry, children love to be read to. Mm -hmm. And I think that using these kind of books, go see your libraries, go see your teachers, your yeah. preschool people. Um, they're they're full of resources just if and if sometimes you can't help your child just a you're at a loss get mm -hmm. a book because like yeah. I said they love they can relate to some of that that conversation is yeah. rich when you're talking with your child about that I was gonna say sometimes a book can say things that we want to say but we just don't know how to say it so by reading the book sometimes you're like oh I did it for and me and it was yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah books are super super helpful books are very very helpful so as we close, I'd like to thank Kristen for being here. It's been a real joy working with her um, as these two segments and maybe down the road in the spring we'll bring her back. There's a lot of ready to use tips here that I hope you can find. I'd like to thank you viewers for joining us. Make sure you leave us some comments, questions, maybe share something that um, you have found useful that's worked for you or a friend or someone mm -hmm. that you know. Uh, we can always help you with additional resources should you need something on this topic or others. Um, again, hope you have an idea that you can put to use right away. COAD is the child care resource agency for 31 counties in eastern Ohio. This broadcast is brought to you today in partnership with the Ohio Children's Trust Fund and the Eastern Ohio Regional Prevention Council, whose mission is to prevent child abuse and neglect through investing in strong communities, healthy families, and safe children. Our eastern region includes the following counties, Belmont, Carroll, Coshocton, Guernsey, Harrison, Jefferson, Monroe, Muskingum, Noble, and Tuscarawas. Now, mark your calendars uh, for Valentine's Day. Our next live session will be on Valentine's Day, kind of easy to remember, yeah. <laughs> February 14th. Uh, in the afternoon at 4 o'clock, my guest will be Kelly Zimmer. Kelly is an early child educator from the Cambridge area, and she's here to uh, share with us some helpful, valuable tips on helping children with emotions and a little bit with the social skill piece. Under, helping children understand why they feel. Identify the emotion. Are you happy, sad, embarrassed? And how to maybe express those in appropriate ways, appropriate and acceptable ways to express mm -hmm. emotions. I'll just come back, see what your role is in helping your child with their feelings on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And I found that uh, I like this little motivational comment at the end. I found another one. Uh, the way we talk to our children becomes their inner voice. Thank you again, and y'all have a great day.